Speaking of taking control, it sounds like this path that you've described in your new book is a lot different than that that you've described in earlier works. Yeah, you're exactly right about that statement. I mean, it's like I say all the time. None of us are victims. We're all just participants. You know, I mean, you can gain control of your life. It's just about perception. I mean, you can change a reality of something that you believe is a fact simply by changing your proximity. Well, go on. You got me right where you want me now. Well, it's really just all about approach. I mean, for example, I don't dream. I have goals. You know, dreams are fleeting. They're like water. You can't grab them. I mean, think about a dream. One minute you're dreaming about your father and you're talking to him, and the next minute you're talking to the garbage man or a president, and then the dream just continues on like nothing has ever changed. I say snap out of that. Get your head out of the clouds. Recognize your skills. Set your goals and attack your goals. Then you'll be successful. That's what this book is about. Your first book, in fact, your first two books, although not as well received as this one, had a robust spiritual side to them. This one, not so much. Is there any significance there? Yeah, yeah, Stephen, there is. I mean, I, I would like to believe that I have a very healthy love and fear of God, but I think I'm a little bit more afraid that he's just probably a very busy man. That's something to chew on. Thank you for inviting us to your home, Ezekiel. Oh, you know what? Anytime, anytime. We just spoke with Ezekiel Anderson, author of the New York Times bestseller, Life, The Easy Way. Easy as in not hard. We'll be right back. Sometimes I feel like a clown. I mean, not in the way that children see them, but in the Pavarotti sense, you know, hiding, pretending. I write what I know I can sell. I mean, when I was younger, I write from the heart. You know, the pages, they were as vast as Kansas wheat fields. <laughs> and I just felt like my hands were guided. Now, I guide them. My wife and I, we don't talk anymore. We drift. When was the last time we fought? Uh, I'm not sure, man. We should fight. Now. Yeah. I, uh, I don't really agree, but... You never listen to Tchaikovsky anymore? Or Leonard Bernstein? Hmm. I don't even notice. I remember the day you were a little past buzzed and you kept going on about how much of a musical genius Tchaikovsky was. Baby, I'm 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 sorry. You wanna you wanna you wanna talk about music? How's the book? I'm almost done. I just gotta go back and put it in its proper perspective. Then? Yeah, and then, I don't know then. We should think about a separation.
That's Operation. Thought never crossed your mind? No, no it hasn't. Maybe it should. You're never gonna be finished writing. Wait, what, what, what's so wrong with that? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. It's... It... Maybe. Listen, remember when we first met? Mm -hmm. You was that skinny little college kid, and I was that wannabe writer who couldn't hold down a job. And I said to you, look, if you come with me, I will write us a life together. And I did, baby. I did something. Our marriage is, is, is ending. I'm not sure how we got here. <laughs> but I've tried, Ezekiel. Baby, what is... Wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? People who kill for this life we have. We have a big house, we have more money than we can spend. Just, I'm almost there. All right, then you can have me. You understand? Every piece of me. Baby, just let me finish. I remember the day that we got married. <laughs> you, you had this ridiculous smile on your face. You were so nervous, happy. It was the first day of my life. I felt like a woman. Bam. Baby, just let me finish, right? I'll fix it. Come on, come on. I promise. Look like you need one. Go ahead, take it. Thanks. What's eating you, if you don't mind me asking? What makes you think something's bothering me? Only time a man stares off into nothing. It's as if something heavy is weighing on him. Yeah, you know what, thanks for the beer. I appreciate it, man. It's all the same as you are. I really don't play talker right now. Husband wife troubles, huh? How'd you know that? When a man's so tight-lipped, it's usually about a woman. I seen your ring. Cheetah wouldn't be out here. Cheetahs rarely think. They just do. Well, 
know what? I think my marriage is over. How's that? It just is. What you gonna do about it? I don't know. Man should fight for his wife, shouldn't he? Yeah. I guess in a philosophical sense. Philosophical. Your marriage is falling apart. You ain't gonna do nothing about it. You know what I said I didn't know. Hey, when I was a little boy, my daddy had a ranch. For my 12th birthday, he bought me a horse. I named her Betsy. I mean, I could have come up with something better than that, but that's the first thing to hit me. I can understand yeah, that. Yeah, me and Betsy, we were the best of friends. I mean, we would ride from sunup to sunset. I was the only one could ride. If anybody else tried to ride her, she'd buck them right off. Then I became a teenager. Only thing I cared about was chasing girls and playing football. You know, sometimes when I'd be coming back from practice or something, I'd see her standing out there all alone in the field. <laughs> you know, it took me two weeks before I realized my daddy had sold her. Anyway, after daddy passed, me and mama got to talking. She told me it about near broke him in two when I forgot about Betsy. Sometimes, we get so caught up in the things of this world. When we discard the gift, we disrespect the giver. Of course, I'm not liking your wife to a horse, but I know you appreciate an analogy. Are you really a fisherman? Yes, I am. Rachel. Ezekiel, stop. Wait, wait, it's wait, wait, wait. wait. It's okay. And baby, listen, baby, please just wait. I'm still that man that you married, all right? I mean, I know I lost him somewhere along the way, but, but baby, I'm, let me be your husband again. Baby. Rachel, stop! Ezekiel, you don't need me. You have your book. Baby, that's not baby, you. I'm Look, I'll burn this down. Money. I'll throw it away. This isn't one of your books, Ezekiel. You can't just write it how you want it. And I can't just keep Listen, writing. I don't, I don't want to be disrespectful. What are you talking about? I was given a gift. Baby, God gave me a gift. He gave me you. And I don't want to be disrespectful to that. Please. Let me be your husband. Baby, don't, baby. Baby, don't. <laughs> 